This uh, mural here that I'm looking at by Dodsworth Street Murals is um, very telling, very strange. As you can see, it is a woman whose hair is made up of little creatures. And the reason I find this so interesting is that that's what I see when I look at the photographs I take of myself and my hair. Uh, I have hundreds, thousands, perhaps even millions, I don't know, they're uncountable, little creatures with uh, faces. Some of them even seem to be wearing clothing. And I can't tell if it's just my artistic mind that adds these details or whether this is actually fact. Excuse me. It appears to me that uh, this Morgellons, or whatever they want to call it, whatever they've done to us, involved or involves millions of little creatures, each of which has eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and seems to have, I'll use the word personality, although I don't know if you can consider them people. I don't know what the definition of the word person really means. Uh, as far as I know, that's a legal corporate fiction to describe a human being, but... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'll use the word anyway. They seem to have personalities, which to me is <clears throat> very strange because uh, I've never actually encountered uh, microbial life or, uh, uh, you know, small beings, uh, almost microscopic, at least macroscopic that seem to have personalities. And whenever I take these pictures of myself and zoom in and blow them up as big as I can with the highest resolution, that's what I see. All these little faces. Now, I know that my camera on my phone has uh, a very strange, uh, what would you call it, a dither, a, uh, a noise when you use the zoom, the digital zoom, and you zoom in on something, uh, what appears in the background uh, underneath all the photographs is a layer of almost fractal noise, fractal in the sense that it repeats again and again and again mathematically uh, into infinity, and the smaller you get, the, the image is the same repeating uh, whether you zoom in or zoom out you'll see the same parts of the image anyway there's a layer of this behind all of my photographs which I believe is one of several things or possibly a combination of them since my body is covered in a living biofilm made up of these creatures and other materials uh, and everything I own is covered in this film also uh, I've taken my phone apart inspected it inside and out and this stuff this white fibrous stuff and these little tiny uh, anthropods mites or whatever they are arachnid something uh, living on and in the phone, um, so there would be a layer of this stuff between the lens and the, uh, the CCD, the light gathering device in the phone. Also, it is possible that the zoom, uh, which is a algorithmic uh, zoom, it's not an optical zoom, it's a Basically, they take the picture, they apply some mathematics to it, and, and, and bring it larger, enlarge it. 
So it is possible to insert into that code, into that Zoom code, uh, this fractal dither, as I call it, which would contain images of, it seems to contain images of faces, eyes, nose, mouth, head, over and over and over and over and over again. But not so clearly that it's, you know, easily definable. But every time you look at something that you blow up really big, this is what you see in the background. And of course, changing the contrast and the, the exposure and the light and dark of the film, uh, the picture rather, these faces will come through. And uh, so separating the, the, the zoom faces and the biofilm faces from the faces on the objects that I'm photographing becomes a bit difficult. And I imagine that's probably one of the reasons why this was done, if in fact it was done. Uh, now, strangely enough, I've managed to find in the trash, because that's where most of the things that I have come from, uh, some a couple of phones with cameras from people and they still had the cards in them which I took out of the phone and inserted into my computer and looked at and zoomed in on the photographs and sure enough uh, although the photographs don't contain this fractal uh, dither they certainly contain something That's disgusting. Anyway, uh, yes, I'm in the habit of picking stuff up off the street and looking at it. I've always been very curious. But, um, so, I've lost my train of thought. Woo woo! Anyway, uh, that picture, that mural is, you know, I keep wondering, do, do these people make these things uh, because they know what's going on and they want me to see it, uh, whatever. You know, I've seen plenty of examples of that. People putting up posters, painting things, stickers, uh, even so far as actual advertising that's spread around the city uh, with images and, and ideas that they want to impart to the targeted individuals they stalk and torture and whatnot. Um, again, the train of thought. Boop, boop. Uh, yes, or if, in fact, these artists are picking up some subconscious, you know, understanding. And that's what brings me to my next point, uh, which is a little bit even stranger, more strange than the first, that I believe it's possible that these creatures these beings, these entities, the little faces that live in your hair and in your skin and uh, uh, have some psychic ability or psychic transmission, you know, like, I, I really don't know what to think because these things have built a grid in my ears out of fibers and and living creatures and they stand on this grid equidistant from each other these little round creatures with the two eyes very tiny and and these nematode like creatures uh, wow that's some pretty freaky shit let's see what do we got here a drawing of a piranha based on an angler fish and I'll tell you this angler fish looks pretty angly to me I don't know if you can see it here but uh, it's pretty freaking freaky we'll let this one go the way of other things that float around the city um, anyway sorry for the distraction I, I believe that these things are somehow psychic and that they're 
either used to transmit or transfer uh, information from the remote neural monitoring devices or radio or whatever it is, and or that they have personalities of themselves because when I take uh, medicines such as ivermectin that's supposed to kill parasites and whatnot, I wound up with A, vision problems because the grid in my eyes is being disturbed and B, this screaming in my head from millions of little beings screaming, the grid, the grid, the precious grid, no, no, don't destroy the grid, and all these visions of little tiny creatures, you know, like pleading with me not to kill them. And this is uh, a very difficult thing for me because I... Uh, you know, I equate this with, with, you know, in order to, in order to be somebody that, that, that is caring and compassionate and loving towards all life forms, even those life forms that would eat me and destroy me, kill me, destroy my physical presence, my body, my vehicle that God has given me, that, 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 you know that it this all goes back to this this vision I had you know, where I spoke to this representative of the Lord and we talked about why all this suffering and pain in the, in the world and and I was told that that God had set this existence in motion with an unanswerable question, with an unresolvable uh, conundrum, and that no matter how you look at this, you cannot come up with an answer for it, and that the only true answer to resolve this unresolvable dilemma was love. And uh, that my endeavor to destroy the beings that are eating me alive uh, is in fact the same as human beings existence on the planet where we rip it apart and tear at its heart and rip out its its elements and you know pollute it and poison it and dig into it and hurt it and and the earth is is there to sustain us and we treat it like uh, you know like a box of corn chips or something. It's supposed to never endingly feed us and you know without regard for its its existence, its living nature and and that somehow for me to, to kill these creatures inside of me would be the same as as the planet killing me. And uh, then, of course, I heard this scientist voice that said, You see, the human mind can be tricked into believing all sorts of nonsense when the conditions are right. And, uh, you know, so I don't know what to think anymore. And I think that's part of what's being done. <laughs> you know, and the strangest part about this is that when this stuff first started, hardcore with the drugging and the craziness and the attacks and the, the bugs they threw at us that would jump into your skin with their tails and sit with their faces on your skin looking around with these big glowing red eyes uh, that somehow I had this this delusion or fear or understanding or something that a, these things were part of me and I was part of them, and B, that I, I believed that Petro was going to eat me. I, I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but that's what I thought, and uh, you know, so I, I, I really don't know what what to believe, uh, and and and. 
you know, it was this vampiric whole thing that was going on, and I had to come to a conclusion that said, fine, if you're going to eat me, then you're going to eat me, and there's nothing I can do about it, and it's okay. And I realized later, a few years later, that in fact, that's exactly what's happening. But it wasn't Petra that was eating me, uh, or some band of human being, vampiric beings or whatever. It's these creatures that have been put on and into me. So, those are my thoughts, and I'll share more if God is willing. Thank you for watching, and God bless you all.